we were uh, discussing digital implementation of uh, bank bank clock and data recovery. What we do is essentially <coughs> one way to arrive at it is to look at the continuous time bank bank CDR and then see how the phase increments in every cycle ok and we see that uh, we have an integral path and a uh, proportional path as usual and the VCO itself represents another integration in discrete time that is accumulation ok. The VCO basically represents an accumulation of a phase by some amount 5 BB the bank bank phase in every cycle that is if you have the up signal held for one whole cycle then that will give you uh, a phase increment of 5 BB ok. So, this is the discrete time model. And it also tells us how to implement the digital uh, implement the clock and data recovery circuit digitally. Okay. And this is the bang bang phase detector, this output y, this uh, has values of plus minus 1 or 0, 0 if there is no transition and we will have phi in and <coughs> this will be phi out ok. This is the model. And to uh, in a digital implementation, we will have exactly uh, I mean nearly exactly the same thing. We will have these accumulators and a phase selector which uh, selects the phase ok. <coughs> the output of this is the phase. Now, if we have a digital accumulator, so from the bang bang phase detector we will have the up and down which are digital signals. I will show this as subtraction, but uh, this subtraction need not necessarily be explicit like this, they can be control signals to the accumulator ok. And we have a digital accumulator to this and we have this 5 b b by 1 minus z inverse ok. This is another accumulator ok. And you know how to make uh, digital accumulators, you have it is usually I think shown like this, you have an input and you have the output coming here. Basically here you have an adder ok, I mean uh, this is I think this also assumes a register over here to store the accumulated value right. So, this is how it is. Mm, I forget whether the symbol includes the register or register or not. So, essentially you just keep on adding that is all that is all that is there to accumulation. And then also I think there will be convenient implementations if uh, this number will be smaller than 1 right this T s is the symbol period and tau r c is the time constant corresponding to the 0. So, T s by tau r c is smaller than 1. But if you choose it to be let us say of the form 2 to the minus some integer, then this implementation becomes quite convenient. Similarly, this 5 bb is some number smaller than 1 and you choose that to be some 2 to the minus l if uh, that is convenient. 
then this uh, implementation also becomes convenient ok. The clock comes from some phase selector. this is used to select the phase the output of this is used to select the phase ok. Now, of course, there may be some additional quantization here meaning let us say this could be 8 bits and you have only a 32 phase selector. So, this selection is only 5 bits. So, you drop the last 3 LSBs and you quantize to the nearest phase that is available ok and this needs a reference clock this comes from a phase lock loop which we will see later ok. Is the idea clear? So, essentially you have a phase selector which takes a reference clock and gives you all possible phases spread over one cycle you can select any one of the phases ok and uh, one way to let us say do this is used to, uh, to use a delay lock loop or something and then uh, take the phases there are other implementations as well to get a large number of phases uh, without burning excessive amounts of power there are some good implementations we will look at that. And then uh, you have to select uh, one of them based on this logic again uh, for instance if clock is lagging D in you get an up signal essentially what happens is that will keep on increasing this output. So, that means it will keep advancing this phase right and uh, finally, it will settle to some point where this clock is near the middle of uh, the data symbol ok. Like in any digital control loop uh, the output will not stay steady at a particular value, but it will be because of quantization it will be chattering between neighboring values at least ok. So, that is something that you have to accept. Now, our bang bang phase detector anyway had this issue the phase was going up and down uh, periodically and this uh, digital phase uh, whereas, there the VCO could give any phase in principle right without any quantization you could adjust the VCO output to any phase by changing its control voltage appropriately uh, whereas, here you cannot even do that you cannot select any arbitrary phase you have to select uh, some quantized version of that ok. So, there can be some additional jitter because of that one. Now, if the quantization is too crude, you will be too far away from the ideal point and then the bitter rate may increase. If the quantization is too fine, it may become very difficult to implement ok. Any questions about this? Yeah, that is right. So, now uh, this D in is coming at some frequency. Let us say if uh, transmit and this clock ref may be at a close by frequency, but it will it is certain to be different ok because we do not have the reference clock right. So, how do you generate so let us say this is clock ref and then you have four possible phases let us say I mean four is too crude, but I will uh, draw that example. So, the phase selector can give you either the same phase or maybe a quarter cycle delayed or a half cycle delayed or three quarter cycle delayed ok. So, these are the possible phase selector outputs. Now, you can imagine lot more uh, finer granularity I mean phases available with finer granularity. Now, if you have only a phase selector and you have clock ref at a certain frequency let us say f t x 
how do you get a different frequency here is it possible huh? yeah so what happens is essentially uh, let us say I mean I will do this every cycle in the real implementation in the CDR the phase selector input is not uh, changing at the same rate as the data rate, but for instance first I will select this ok let me call this like 1, 2, 3, 4 first I will select 1 ok then in the very next cycle uh, let us say I select Okay. So, that means that this would have come here, but I select 2. So, it will get delayed by quarter cycle okay. and in the next select this one I select 3. So, then it will get delayed by further quarter cycle. So, if I go in this direction uh, like 2 is lagging 1, 3 is lagging 2 and 4 is lagging 3 right. So, if I continuously change the control word in this direction, I will get a lower frequency okay. because I am continuously making the rising edges lag. Okay, and if I and if I go in this direction, I get a higher frequency. Okay, this is easiest to think of if you recall the picture of uh, theta versus time of uh, any periodic signal, right? So you have a periodic signal; it will have a slope of two pi f naught, and to get a higher frequency, you need a higher slope. So, you need to keep like advancing the phase in every cycle compared to this one. Uh, this is a higher frequency and this will be a lower frequency. So, in every cycle if you introduce an additional phase lag you will get a lower frequency there is of course, a limit of uh, how much you can change the frequency that is related to how many phases you have and how often you can change the code right. So, it is possible to change the frequency in this case what will happen is this uh, if this f r x is different from f t x this means that the output of this right it will be continuously changing like a ramp of course it will change like a ramp and then the accumulator will fold it back and so on that is ok anyway the phase also has a modulo characteristic. So, that is fine it is ok. So, this control word here will be like this ramp modulo some number ok if the receive and transmit frequencies are different it has to be because you have to continuously step through the phases in order to synthesize a different frequency ok. Now, this uh, you have to synthesize a different frequency I mean when you do not have a forwarded clock you will have to do this right. So, this also implies that you cannot be exactly at the center of the clock or even in the same position of the uh, clock in every cycle because you have a finite number of phases spread through the period right and to increase the frequency by a certain amount in every cycle you have to change the phase by a certain amount that amount may be anything that depends on the frequency difference right. Basically approximately if uh, T naught is the period it is different for uh, the two cases T naught times delta f this is the uh, times 2 pi I guess this is the amount of phase increment that you have to give in every uh, cycle. Now, you have only quantized phases available. So, this may not be available. So, what will happen is in some cycles you will be leading in some cycles you will be lagging. lagging so, that itself also gives you jitter ok. So, that is why of course, you certainly cannot operate with only 4 phases 
may be 32 phases is uh, required at least if not more ok. Any questions? Yeah, we will see that. First, you have to generate like equally spaced uh, phases within a cycle that you could get from let us say you have only a single clock reference you could get from a delay lock loop or something and then, uh, but the delay lock loop may not be able to generate like all the phases. It may be too power expensive to generate all the 32 or 64 phases using this. So, you generate a few phases. And then you also typically use a phase interpolator that will give you. Uh, so, you have let us say 0 and 45 degrees, it will give you uh, phases between 0 and 45 based on some weighted summation, ok. We will see, I mean, I think we have to, we will have to look at it in some detail. So, we will look at the circuit, ok. Now, uh, any other questions? We had the earlier case of uh, forwarded clock. This is the phase detector up down the usual stuff, right. just a capacitor. And this uh, control voltage was used to change the delay, right. Now, of course, here also you can have either a bang bang or a linear phase detector. I initially started with this uh, case of the forward clock and then moved to the case without forward clock and we did all our uh, small signal modeling and everything of that ok. We can quickly complete this, this is not difficult and then see uh, how they compare. So, let us say d in at some uh, phase phi n, this is the sort of the operating point right that is d in appears at some phase and clock appears at some other phase. Okay. Now, we do know that in uh, steady state again it is uh, usual to I mean it is usually convenient to uh, for analysis assume a linear phase detector and then go with it after that we can substitute the bang bang phase detector. If we have a linear phase detector we know that uh, the whole thing will get stabilized when the average output here is 0 which is when this clock here C k is aligned to the center of the data interval ok. Now, what will be the phase of this? Huh? It will be? Yeah. So, no I mean if, uh, if this is set to some delay tau, this will be at minus the radian frequency of the clock omega naught times tau right ok. Now, uh, what we want to do is to apply like phase increments and then see what happens. Let us say you have jitter in the input data and so on ok. We know that this whole thing will be equal to phi n right in the operating point that is our reference that is how we measure it actually. Okay. Okay. 
in fact let me make this upper case v control to denote that it is the operating point. <laughs> Now, we can have phase increments everywhere, we can have jitter in the input data, we can have jitter in the clock, okay. this will in general introduce some increment in the control voltage and it will also introduce some increment in the clock phase. Okay. <coughs> and these uh, increments can also be affected by the noise of the current source right, because that is a some additional input. I mean normally these are supposed to be carrying a constant currents ICP, but in general they will also have some additional noise. Okay. So, the incremental model is basically uh, what gives you the relationship between these different increments right. So, and the incremental model for the phase detector itself, I mean from uh, these inputs to this output is a gain of ICP by 2 pi. Okay. If you have rectangular, I mean alternating data, uh, if you have some transition density factor, it will get multiplied by the density factor. Okay. So, please try to uh, make the block diagram, the model block diagram, which relates this uh, phi n, phi c k n, phi c k v control and so on, just like the earlier one right. We had the incremental phase domain model for the case without the forwarded clock. Now, we have with forwarded clock I do the same thing for this. You can assume that uh, this relationship between this tau and v control is linear. Okay. So, let us say tau is some tau 0 minus k tau times V control. Okay. The phase of this uh, C k here right that is basically whatever the input phase is minus omega naught times tau right. <coughs> this will be and for simplicity I will omit this because this anyway cancels off with the operating point quantity right. I will omit the operating point quantities or maybe initially I will uh, keep that. So, this is the phase of d in the phase of uh, the input clock is phi c k in the operating point value plus any jitter it may have. And the phase of the clock is whatever is the phase of clock in minus omega naught times tau right this is okay and <coughs> this itself is omega naught times tau naught minus k tau times v control okay again this is uh, there is the operating point value and okay and the phase detector inputs are uh, the phase of d in uh, minus i mean and the phase of the clock okay so <coughs> the operating point values this part uh, maybe i'll color it differently this part and this part will cancel off right because at the operating point it is operating in the middle of the data this is 
the upper case phi c k in minus omega naught tau naught minus k tau v control. Okay. So, we are left with the incremental quantities, right. So, what are the phase reductor inputs? The phase reductor takes the difference between phi n and phi c k and phi c k itself is the sum of this one and that one, okay. basically this one and that one. So, phi c k is phi c k in plus omega naught times k tau this is the scaling factor k tau the way we have defined it what is the what are the dimensions of k tau what are the units of k tau yeah seconds per volt or times per divided by voltage so time times this becomes phase basically it is phase divided by voltage so that becomes consistent and then this is being driven by v control and this phase difference phi in minus phi c k what do you have the usual gain of i c p by 2 pi again this is assuming alternating data you also have to multiply uh, by the density factor transition density factor and what do you have after that yeah basically it is an integration which is a transfer function of 1 by s c that is all. Okay. Now, what are the possible sources of noise here in this circuit? Huh? Charge from definitely the charge from current noise is there. Where would you add that? Huh? Yeah, basically again let us assume that I mean at least with a linear phase detector we know that this is on for half the time and that is on for half the time and I will assume that they have the same noise spectral density that may not be the case if they do not have the same noise spectral density we will take the average. So, I will simply add I n C p over there. What else is the source of noise? The delay line will have some jitter because the delay line uh, it is some active circuit it is a let us say a string of inverters. So, it means that every edge we saw this while analyzing the phase noise of a ring oscillator an edge will get delayed by some amount, but that is not going to be exact because of the noise of the inverters used in the delay line that will jitter around. So, the delay of this will have some uh, jitter okay. <coughs> let us say it is tau j or uh, you can multiply that by the radiance frequency and call it a phase jitter phi j. It is a time jitter tau j or a phase jitter phi j. Where will that get added up in the model? Where will you get where will you add that? After the gain block. Basically, it is like adding it to phi c k in right it is like adding it to the clock phase I mean sorry phase of the input clock okay? because that will get jittered around further. The input clock will have its own jitter and the delay line will add some more jitter to that. So, <coughs> we can add some phi j here. So, this is the delay line jitter, this is the input clock jitter, this is the input data jitter okay. and we also know that just like we did in the other case without the forwarded clock, this i n c p can be added as an equivalent phase here. right? How do you do that? What is the, you want to move 
this uh, charge pump noise to this point, what will you add? Divided by the gain of the charge pump. So, I n C p divided by I C p by 2 pi. Okay. This part you have to be careful while uh, uh, doing it for, uh, I mean when you have some transition density less than 1. Okay. Right now, I have assumed, uh, assumed an alternating data. Okay. So, now and the, the output clock is there okay. that is I mean it is it it's, it's, uh, it's the phase of uh, the output clock that we are interested in for the sake of uh, jitter generation and jitter transfer and how do we calculate j tall the jitter tolerance. How do we do that? That is, we apply a jittery input data and see at what point the bit error rate goes beyond a certain value. So, what is it? How did we go about that calculation? So, this uh, phi in minus phi clock, right, that difference has to be within some limit, let us say one fourth of a cycle or maybe even less than that, right. So, that gives you jitter tolerance. So, we can calculate all those uh, uh, transfer functions first. Uh, jitter transfer. So, you calculate phi c k by phi n and then for the sake of jitter generation, you will have to calculate. <coughs> I mean in this case, of course, the input clock itself has a, a jitter as well. So, you have to calculate phi c k by phi c k in which is the same as phi c k by phi j right. These transfer functions are the same right phi j and phi c k in they give you the same uh, this one. So, you please calculate this okay. and then you also have to calculate uh, phi c k by i c p. We know that this is the same as phi c k by phi n times 2 pi by i c p right. So, please calculate all these uh, transfer functions and for jitter tolerance what we need is phi n minus phi c k the absolute value to be less than some phi 0 let us say. Okay. So, this means that the jitter tolerance in terms of phase will be what? So, this would be some phi naught divided by 1 minus phi c k by phi n. Okay. So, we can calculate all of these things uh, I think this is quite simple and in the meanwhile you can also maybe before doing that you calculate the loop gain L of s of the feedback loop and also plot of both the Bode plots of all these things. Right? What is the loop gain? What is the order of the loop? First order, I mean the other case we had a second order loop, in this case it is a first order loop and what is the loop gain? I basically, there is just a single pole at the origin, you have I c p by 2 pi omega naught k tau times 1 by s c that is all. So, Okay. So, the loop gain magnitude is like that, that is the unity loop gain frequency. Again, I keep repeating that this is for alternating data, you will have an additional density factor uh, which appears everywhere. The 
this is the magnitude of L, the angle of L not very important, but anyway it will be minus 90 degrees everywhere okay. and on this you can plot the Bode plot of these other transfer functions. one because every uh, point where you can have a transition you do have a transition right if you have alternating data uh, you can have transition at the end of every simple interval and if you have alternating data you do right so if you have a uh, random data so that means that sometimes you will have consecutive bits sometimes you will have 101 and so on on average like if you take let's say uh, 1000 simple interval alternating data will have 1000 transitions whereas this will have on average of 500 transitions but you could have even fewer transitions i mean depending on the data i mean depending on the density factor and in fact there are some coding <coughs> uh, techniques to ensure that the density factor is sufficient not only that if you have purely random data there is no limit to how many continuous ones you can get in principle i can get 100 ones also with a small probability but i can get it but uh, there are coding techniques which will make sure that the longest uh, it is known as the run length the consecutive identical digits is uh, limited to certain number. Okay. This is I mean lot of these things are just to make sure that the clock and data recovery works properly and equalization more than equalization is for clock and data recovery otherwise you have a very long string of uh, consecutive identical digits you have no information for the clock recovery. So, it can drift around and so on ok it is not as ideally maybe the clock was fixed at the center and it will remain at the center, but that is not the case the frequency could have been slightly off the phase will be slightly off. So, it will keep on drifting ok in that period. So, what do you get phi c k by phi into b what kind of transfer function? Just the loop gain? No. What is it? Phi C k by phi n, the digital transfer. No, it cannot be the loop gain. Loop gain is just uh, when you break the loop and you find it, that is the loop gain is just this, ok. I am asking what is the transfer function phi c k by phi n. I mean this may be drawn differently with uh, many quantities added in, but basically you have a feedback loop phi n and you have a whole bunch of things and after that you have phi c k and it is fed back ok. So, this is like g by 1 plus g where g is the gain of all of these things together ok. Yeah. So, what kind of uh, transfer function will that be? Yeah, it will be a low pass, low pass transfer function, right? Just like before, very high frequency uh, variations in uh, the input phase will not be tracked, low frequencies will be tracked, that is all. So, if you are getting confused, we have phi n, we have L of s and we have phi c k in this is phi c k ok. So, phi c k by phi n is just L by 1 plus L and this turns out to be 1 by 1 plus s by omega u loop and omega u loop is nothing but i c p by 2 pi omega naught k tau divided by S c ok. So, it is a low pass uh, transfer function with a uh, corner of omega u loop. Similarly, what is phi c k by what do you expect uh, phi c k by phi c k into be what kind of shape? It will be high pass ok and please calculate all these transfer functions and sketch them 